Shout out to the supporters of Tupac was lyrical. This video is called This Video's for the Haters, Part 2. If you ain't seen Part 1, check out that one. I remember I went crazy on that one. Haters are the ones that fuel my creativity. They come here and say the most nonsensical things that I wouldn't expect a human being to even say. But they think they making sense. This one guy responded saying, yo, you could take Jay-Z's five years and compare it to Tupac's five years and it'll smash any it'll smash Tupac's five years. I'm like, all right, so I don't understand. I, I had to tell a dude like, yo, I don't understand what you mean, bro. So Tupac debuted in 91. In five years, his fifth is you know one of his final albums when he was alive came out in '96. Jay Z came out in '96. So you're gonna take from '96 to 2001 all the way up. What album would that be? Jay Z, The Blueprint. So you're gonna take those five years after Pac died and compare it to Pac's debut. So you're gonna you know uh, too populous now, reasonable. Like I don't I didn't even understand what the hell he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Um, another dude responded saying, I understand everybody ain't going to like the same type of songs and stuff like that. But this dude said, yo, just out of nowhere, I don't even understand. Like these dudes, is, oh my God, just weird to me. But the dude just came out and said, what's your phone number is a whack song. It's whack. And I was just like, eh, I, I, I think the song is pretty dope. The way Tupac was flowing. The way Danny Boy was killing the hook. They had the real conversation at the end. And on top of that, it's a Prince sample. Like, there's nothing whack about it. But that was his opinion. You know what I'm saying? That's his opinion. And I said, you know what? I said, besides, I don't care about you or who any or whoever else that don't like the record. It's a classic. So when he seen the comment. He said I was in my feelings because he stopped that when I said, I don't care about you. Didn't finish the rest of my sentence. The rest of my statement directed at him. He stopped right then and there. Then another guy came here and tried to argue with me about Tupac not having the first hip hop album. In the hip hop culture. And I already mentioned that Jazzy Jeff and the, and the Fresh Prince you know, arguably had the first hip hop album, but it was due to that there, especially back then in 1989, they had so much music that they had to reduce an 89 minute album to a 75 minute album. And they had to package it as a double LP. It wasn't necessarily intended on being the hip hop's first double album. It just happened like that. Tupac, when he first titled his album Euthanasia, he wanted it to be a double album. That was his intentions. So he would have been the first hip hop rapper to make a double album. You know, that was his intentions. It wasn't made by accident, even though I don't disregard what Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince added to the hip hop culture with that album. He's the DJ and I'm a rapper being a double LP. But when you read it, when you research it, it was just that that it was just so much music that they had to cut it down and some songs didn't even make the album. But getting back to the hater, I'm trying to give him facts and he just coming with the BS. Somebody else called me a Tupac groupie. I'm like, oh man, like, why are you here? My man was telling me that some people get paid to be like that. Even if somebody is getting paid to troll, I couldn't do that kind of job, man. I couldn't do that kind of job. I wouldn't be able to rest that night because I got integrity. You know what I mean? Somebody's trying to put out some meaningful content about whoever, even about their, their selves, their lives, or about some other artists that they appreciate or something in a, in a historical context, something that these people are trying to do. You mean to tell me that somebody is being paid from YouTube or some bots, you know, to actually troll the person that's trying to put out meaningful content that's what we doing even if that's true you guys are weirdos if you're doing that 
Even if you would just show me your paychecks, I'd probably be like, God damn, that's what you, that's how much money you getting paid to troll niggas? God damn. But I would still look at you like you a fucking weirdo because I have to ask you, do you appreciate what these people are trying to bring to the public? Then top it all off, then this guy said, I said, yo, over here on Tupac was lyrical. We defend Tupac's lyrical legacy. He said to me, what gives you the right to defend Tupac's lyricism? Come on, man. Anyway, let's get into these three verses right here. Murderous mind state, can't keep my nine straight. Sipping on this Hennessy, waiting for the time to break. Show up and motherfuckers bow down, recognize. West side death row, outlaw riders. Untouchable mob of pistol packers. Well known fellas, labeled for drugs, selling merciless jackets. Forever buzz, roll with thugs and dogs. Commence the letting on rounds, then escaping the throne. Who wanna see me solo? Catch Machiavelli while he's sleeping. My mini 14 murdering niggas while they creeping. Let me say this real quick. I can play mad verses from Tupac and you'll never hear Tupac unless you got some old ass demos. You know what I mean? When he was just, when everybody else was just rhyming about, you know, being the best rapper and battling and stuff like that. Unless you got that shit, and that nigga probably did that when he was 16, 17, whatever. But since Tupac came in the game with each album, with, with each album that he made while he was alive, you can't show me a song where he talked about he was the best rapper. And if you do, then I'll be like, oh shit, damn, I was wrong. It might just be one song, but I doubt it. I feel like I know his catalog very well. Anyway, my point is, you never heard Tupac bragging about being the dopest MC. You always heard Tupac either making reflective, introspective songs, you know what I mean? Like a song like Keep Your Head Up or Brenda's Got a Baby or Dear Mama, or you might hear Tupac do a little couple of party uh, songs and stuff like that. Even with his party records, he'll still get political. You know what I mean? He won't even get on no, even in Hit Him Up, he, he said, this ain't no freestyle battle or you niggas getting killed. Like, he wasn't even trying to be the dopest MC with the next song. He was just, you know, on some stuff. And uh, uh, he never bragged about being the dopest lyricist, the dopest MC, none of this. But how, so how did we come to this point where everybody is trying to ridicule his lyrics? So how did we get to this point where a person that never bragged about being the dopest MC but you want to hang on his every word and like only thing Tupac talked about is Hennessy and enemies like why he never put himself there so if his fans put himself there so be it but you people you fucking haters you need to be real logical and think to yourself like yo why am I mad at Tupac now let's get into the second one them bitches is foul take a look at the evening news and see a nigga getting cut by the boys in blue is it a frame up trying to keep me out the game stuff these motherfuckers trying to dirty up my name but i'm slipping quick as the wit it's me and them fuck friends my folks be on a mission trying to do me in fuck them about to get out they all saw if i blow up in the rage and then the rage blow they balls off why you niggas trying to test me trick and be the first ones to snitch to arrest me bitch main thing was to make a meal to get only if you with the real the nigga will kick it all in force with the steel you the lessons that I learned to jail Rule one, fuck a bust, he could burn in hell Network with connects that I got in the pen In no time I'll be clocking again When I get free Again Even in that verse right there You ain't hear shit to say You ain't hear shit about Tupac saying I'm the dopest rapper Nothing, everything he spoke about was his life Everything he spoke about just now Was what he was going to do when he come home from prison Speaking about his life Nor did he say Hennessy in that motherfucker but nah, y'all niggas just want to discredit Tupac for whatever freaking reason. Idiotic, bro. Idiotic. Crawling on the rap pack. And phony rap stars to think they got me. I'm on some Superman shit now, they shouldn't have shot me. Uh, Cause I'm convinced that my squad is real and God has blessed me with the power to be hard to kill. I got a mind that's full of murderous thoughts. When I unleash, I make them niggas bow. Feel me now, or be deceased. I ain't choosing sides. Hell no, nah, fuck everybody. It's West Side when I ride, watch for dead bodies. Lyrics are colorful, words are anesthetics. Problems are getting worked out faster than calisthenics. I'm bulletproof, blazed up. On 
Don't talk about my man's roof, hands on the fully AK So what you plan to do, move motherfuckers till they feel me It's West Coast nigga, fuck New York, now that everybody hear me You shot at my homies, now I'm a blast Screaming thug like motherfucker when I pass is that, is that the reason why y'all hate Tupac? Because he really, really brought his actual life to the rhymes, you know what I mean? To the bars. When everybody else be talking all that gangster shit, that shit is dope. Oh, shit, that nigga can spit. That nigga can spit, and look how he said that. But when Tupac do it and they really put his life into it, uh, that nigga trash, bro. That shit wax, son. That, you know, no. Even there was a little part in there in this rap where Tupac said, on top of my man Root, like, he was, a, you know, a little bit of that fast rhyming shit that he used to do, like on his first album, I think on the song Young Black Male and a couple of other joints. You know what I mean? It came out a little bit on top of my man roof. Like, but anyway, he said, I got murderous thoughts and all this other shit. Like, you know what I mean? This is the dude. It was just his mind state changed after the sh after the, the rape, after the shooting. His mind state been changed. You know, I got to stop saying that shit. You know what I mean? It was just getting... The reality was just closing in on Pop. As much as he was trying to love his people, the reality it was like, damn, I only can help those who want to help themselves or those who seem genuine because I don't know who to fucking trust. <laughs> when you hear the story, when Easy Mo B pulled up on Pop and Easy Mo B was like, yo, Pop, it's Mo. And he said Tupac just looked up at him and turned his head right back and waited for the light to change and pull off. That shit hurt at Easy Mo B. But Easy Mo B even said, now this is see, now this is what I'm talking about. Cause he could have took that shit and ran with it and started shitting on Pac. You know what I mean? And then I probably would have been like, yo, Easy Mo B, you don't even understand where Tupac is coming from. But I don't have to do that because Easy Mo B is knew exactly where he was coming from. Now it's crazy that a lot of other people don't, or they just don't care. Easy Mo B worked with this dude. Gave him temptations, gave him straight balling, gave him if I die tonight, running from the police. You know what I'm saying? Gave him a few tracks that they work together, bro. Even Tupac, yo, Mo B, I ain't trying to hear that shit, man. You know what I mean? Shot at him out. That shit hurt it, easy Mo B, when Tupac just looked at him. That was his last time seeing Tupac. But he said he understood what that brother was going through, man. He understood. Why the haters don't understand that? Like, real talk, why y'all so mad at a dude that died 27 years ago? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy to me, bro. Y'all are really mad. Y'all really hate Tupac, bro. Or are y'all paid trolls? I don't know. Even if you're paid trolls, you're weirdos. But if you're not, you're insane. Why do you hate a person that died 27 years ago? What did he do to you? So we just neglect, we just disregard everything that he tried to do, everything that he said. Him busting at the cops and saving the brother's life, that don't mean nothing. Him checking up on this little girl that got mauled, that got attacked viciously by a pit bull, just popping up on him and paying the hospital bills, that type of stuff mean nothing. Him representing, speaking up for Yummy Sandiford, that means nothing. Him talking about Latasha Harlins, that means nothing. Him speaking up for Geronimo Pratt, Matulu Shakur, Asada, um, all, all those all those brothers from the Panthers, that mean nothing. Him telling, it, he was, him telling us to unite, you know what I mean? All that stuff means nothing. All that shit gets thrown out the window because of his, the last final days of his life.